show you how to gut the muffler on a Teo Teo DBX1, that's the 140cc. And they just come with this factory muffler right here, which doesn't sound too bad, but you know, with these Chinese bikes, I'm trying to get every ounce of power out of them and also make it sound better. Um, so we're gonna get started to take this off. There's a hole right here in the fender. And if you look in there, that bolt right there, it takes a 10 millimeter. And then on the back, you'll have to put a 12 millimeter wrench right there and then just ratchet it out through the hole. Once you do that, this pipe will just, it'll just slide right off. Um, and then you can do what you want with the pipe. Okay, so we're gonna get started on, I'll, I'll take this off real quick and then I'll show you how I'm gonna gut it. Okay guys, so I have the pipe off and I've went ahead and cut it. And what I used was just my grinder with the cutting wheel. Um, but what I did, I just cut out around it there. I'm just gonna cut this section off. Now you're gonna have two restrictor plates or, or baffles, one about right here and one about right here. And these are actually tack welded to this piece of metal right here. So what you're gonna have to do is take a flathead screwdriver and you can see in there where these baffle plates are. See if you can see that. See, there's one of the plates. There's one of them right there. And the other one's just gonna be right down here. I don't know if you can see this one. Let's see if I can pry it up a little bit more so you can see where it's at. See it right in there? You can kind of see it back, back in behind there. Yeah, I'm doing this on my phone. It's hard to see. But you can see it in there. I kind of cut through it with my cutting disc a little bit. So you'll have one here and you'll have one here. And that's that's all that's in there. It's just two little restrictor plates with a bunch of little tiny holes drilled in it. So what you have to do to get this plate off, because right now it's still stuck to those restrictor plates where it's tack welded. What I do is I just get in here, pry up a little bit, and then I'll take a hammer and beat this screwdriver up in there until I can kind of wiggle and, and break that little tack weld free. It's not real strong, just a little bit of wiggling and it'll come loose. Um, so um, I will pick this back up once I get this plate off and show you what's inside. You can see the little tack weld right there. That's where it was welded to this top piece right here. And I just stuck a flat head in there and beat on it and then just kind of kind of wiggled it a little bit, a little bit of wiggling and it broke free. Now on the other side, it has one also. See that right there? This one, this one was tack welded on this side. The other one was tack welded on that side. And I just did one right before this. So, and it was the same way. They, they were kind of at angles. If one's up here, usually the other's down here. May not be the same in all cases. Now to get this one off, I'm just gonna show you here how easy it is because I, since I've already broke that one free, this will kind of wiggle. So just wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Just a kid. Here's Doesn't have to be anything major. But anyway, you, you can see it was welded right there and it just, it broke that weld off. You can see it right there where it was tack welded. Now, to get these out, they are tack welded, and let me grab my light so I can shine it in there and show you. But you're probably not going to. Nope. I'm sure you've got a perfectly good excuse. Kids, work. I get it. You're busy. So what better time than now? Let's begin. Raise one finger if you're a man. Okay. This one has two more welds in it. You can see one right down there, and then the other one. The other one is just right there. So you can see one and two. And those are gonna be pretty easy to get out. Same way with um, the one in the back. There's one there. 
It's probably going to be one up here. Yep, there's the other one. All you really got to do is stick a flathead screwdriver in there and wiggle a little bit. What I like to do is take my sawzall and just kind of cut down. You can see where when I was cutting the top of the muffler off, I cut a slot in that. I like to just take my sawzall and just cut it down as low down as I can get down there. And then same way on this side, and I'll kind of wiggle this whole section out right here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. Okay, so what I've done now, you can see I, I took my saws off and I just cut a line straight down as low as I could get. And same thing over here. And then I really just want to get this middle piece out right now. So we're just going to bend this back and forth it'll take you just a minute that metal's got to wear down get thin and break the faster you can move your hand the quicker it goes I would imagine pretty much all of these dirt bike mufflers are kind of going to be about the same they I've seen some scooter mufflers that were they had packing and stuff in them One second, I'm gonna work on this. I'm gonna get both of these out because um, you have two, one here and one here, but I'm gonna get both of these out and then I'll show you how to get the bottles. Sitting in there like so. And I just wiggled back and forth with the pliers until that piece came out. But in the process of doing this, because this is how I did the last one, and then I just went back in and wiggled this one, but I was thinking, hey, listen, maybe it's not necessary to cut those down first and take this chunk out so I can get down into the bottom there. Maybe I can just wiggle it from the top and that seems to be working on this one here. So I didn't even cut this one all the way down and it's wiggling pretty well. In fact, I think I've already broke free the bottom. Yeah, I have. So I'm just gonna, look at that, it came out. You can see where it was tack welded in there. And it was tack welded also somewhere down in the bottom. I'm, I'm thinking right down in there. Hard to tell, it's so dirty in there. No, nope, I'm sorry, it was tack welded right there. You can see the little spot right there. And if I hold this up, you can see that tack weld where it went right there. And then the one that was right there. So may not be necessary to um, notch them out first. I did it with the first one and it worked fine. So I just thought I'd do the same thing with this one, but it looks like that's not really necessary. Now with this one, I'm just gonna kind of do the same thing here. I'm just gonna twist everything back and forth. Those little tack welds, they're gonna be the weakest spot on this metal so they should definitely break first get a better grip on this This is getting kind of hard to do holding the phone in one hand so we'll pick this right back up once i get this one out what it looks like in there is just all all hollow now the only thing that was in there was those two restrictor plates uh, this is the one that i notched out and then i just twisted with the pliers broke it free same way with this one just twisted with the pliers so now what i'm going to do I'm just going to shake all this out real quick, get all that nasty junk out of there. It's a nasty rainy all day, but you can see all that soot coming out of there. I guess you can blow it out if you want. I, don't, I think that's good enough for me. So now, 
we'll just put this back in a vise to hold it here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna sit this back on here, like so. I'll straighten it up a little bit and all that first, but just gonna weld it up around the sides. And I will show you the finished product when I'm done welding. All right, guys, I finished welding it back up. So y'all take a look at it here. That is the patch that we cut out. And then I just went around and welded it. Now, since this is going on a dirt bike and it's gonna get wet and rust up, um, especially where I welded it up, the pipe is actually stainless steel, but I don't want my welds rusting up and all that kind of stuff and rusting out. So I'm gonna mask it off and I'm just gonna take some, I have some engine enamel that is um, aluminum color. I will just mask that off and, and spray it. This is the back side of the muffler, the front side of the muffler. Just kind of looks like that. So, I mean, I'll clean all that up and you'll never see it looking at the side of the bike unless you climb up underneath the fender well and look in there. That's it, guys. Let me paint this and then I'll install it and I'll let you hear what it sounds like on the bike. Okay, so finished up the muffler and got it installed back on the bike. And the only real difference you can notice is if you get underneath the bike here, and this is just where I painted it with aluminum paint. It's not quite as shiny as the factory stainless steel, but it's on the back side, so you really can't tell. And it's sealed up good and it will keep it from rusting. So this is my son's bike, but I also have a DBX one and I have already done this to my bike. So we're gonna go outside. I have mine running, warming up and I'll show you what it sounds like. here that's where I did mine now I haven't painted mine yet but I did, it is all welded up and, and gutted on the inside so I'm gonna take mine back off and paint it which is why I have it out here but let me crank it back up and I'll let you um, hear how it sounds Sounds a lot better to me. So, um, especially when you're riding it and you let off the gas, it's got that growl to it. So, if you're looking for an exhaust replacement on your Teo Teo DBX1, that's the that's the best solution I found. And this took me, I'm going to say about 45 minutes to, to do each one of these. Um, it didn't cost me anything. Um, You'll, you'll need a 10 millimeter socket for one side of the bolt. You'll need a 12 millimeter wrench to hold the nut in place right there. Once you do that, it just slides right off. Cut it open, remove the two restrictor plates and weld it back together and she slides right on. Um, and not only does it sound better, but it should improve the performance a little bit, you know, it. it it frees up that restriction that was in the exhaust. Um, but to me, the main reason I did it was the sound. I wanted it to sound better. But thanks for watching. Um, and if you liked what I did here, if it helped you out any with your Teo Teo DBX1 exhaust, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. And I appreciate it. Bye-bye.